Hi everyone, welcome to our second virtual holiday show with Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. Shortly, I'll hand you over to Kerry, the UK account manager for Fred Olsen. But firstly, I would just like to tell you a little bit about Lincolnshire Co-op Travel. As I'm sure some of you already know, we at Lincolnshire Co-op Travel have been looking after our members for over 150 years. And um, we are a successful local business who reinvest our profits locally. As we are not owned by a tour operator, we are 100% independent. That means we can offer you the right holiday for you, whether it be a European cruise or something a bit further afield. We also support local charities. This means that when you shop with us, we give back to the local community. And finally, before I hand over to Kerry, you'll be able to see a list of your local branches on your screen. More details can be found at www.lincolnshire.coop forward slash travel. And at the end of this session, we will be having a quick Q&A to answer some of your questions. So without further ado, over to you, Kerry. Thanks. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Um, well, a very good um, afternoon, everybody. Um, as Paul said, my name's Kerry and I'm going to be talking to you about Fred Olsen Cruise Lines and, of course, some of our exciting itineraries that we have coming up for 2022 and 2023. Okay, so just some of the points I'm going to be covering with you today. Um, they are our new ships. Um, what's special about the new ships that we've got, Valletta and Borealis. A sneak peek at when we're getting them ready for you to get back in the water. Reasons why you would want to cruise with us at Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. And of course, some new cruises. So cruising a little bit closer to home with more regional departure ports, handcrafted highlights and a world cruise first. So first of all, let's introduce the new family members to you. So last summer in the crazy pandemic um, of coronavirus, we decided that we were going to purchase some two new ships to add to our fleet. So the first one here you can see is Belletta. So although we've purchased new ships and yes, they are slightly bigger than what we had previously, rest assured they are still very much a Fred Olsen ship. Um, just to give you an idea on passenger numbers on the new ships, Valletta is 1,338 guests and she'll be uh, starting hopefully her maiden voyage out of Dover in the summer and she'll be operating in and out of Dover and Southampton uh, for 2022-2023. So a few facilities on board our new ships, uh, we've got seven restaurants, eight bars and lounges, a show lounge, swimming pools, jacuzzis, fitness centres, hairdressers, spas, libraries, all the usual things that you would see if you are a regular passenger with us on our existing Fred Olsen ships. And if you're new to Fred Olsen, um, although they're small ships, again, rest assured, we still have the facilities and features that you would find on other cruise ships on board our smaller vessels. Moving on to Borealis, so just to give you an idea, these images are artist impressions and very hopefully very soon we'll actually be able to have our own photographs of these ships in these beautiful ports of call around the world. So Borealis is also a new ship and passenger wise she carries 1,357 guests. So just to give you a comparison, they, um, they carry one fifth passengers less than the big ships out there um, on the ocean. So again, seven restaurants, bars and lounges. We have eight show lounges, jacuzzi, swimming pools, um, similar features that you would find on our other ships as well. Borealis is predominantly going to be sailing in and out of Liverpool for 2022 and she'll obviously have her maiden voyage um, out of Liverpool hopefully later this summer. So, of course, those two new ships are joining the rest of our fleet. Um, so Balmoral, as you can see here, she used to be our largest ship within the fleet at 1,325 guests. So the new ships are not too much bigger than Balmoral. And, and she's going to be cruising in and out of Newcastle, Portsmouth and also Southampton for 2022 and 2023. And then moving on to what is now our baby of the fleet is the Bremer. So she's our uh, smallest vessel within the fleet, carrying just over 900 passengers. Um, and as you can see here from this picture, she, this one is here cruising through the Corinth Canal over in Greece. So she's small enough to still be able to cruise through the Corinth Canal and other places around the world uh, where big ships simply can't get to. 
Of course, she will be returning to do her Caribbean fly cruising season for the winter of 2022 and 2023, but we will come on to the itineraries in just a moment. So um, all our ships are currently up in dry dock, getting ready um, to set sail as soon as the government allow and as soon as we can get back into the water, of course, we will be able to do so. But whilst they're all up in dry dock, up in Rosyth, up in Scotland, I just thought I would share some pictures of what we've actually been doing. So our two new ships in particular, we are very much putting our Fred Olsen stamp on those ships. So if you have cruised with Fred Olsen before, you'll come to love our new ships and become accustomed to exactly what we had on the previous ships. So we've been painting the funnels, like I said, and putting the Fred Olsen flag and our stamp on the new ships. So the two new ships do have a lot of new features and facilities to add to our fleet, uh, particularly on board the new ones. There's more space throughout the ship, so more space per guest. We've got an all weather swimming pools with retractable roofs, so you can simply sit by the pool, got a cocktail in hand, whatever the weather, um, and because there is a retractable roof there for you. And lots of um, original decor, premium decor, space, uh, we're just in the process of uh, fitting carpets and new lamps and lights and all those sorts of things throughout the ship. So they will be ready as soon as we're able to get back into the water. We've got more restaurants, bars and lounges, as well as dedicated meeting spaces, particularly if we've got large groups coming on board. Uh, one area on the ship I think is going to be um, a fantastic addition to the fleet is the culinary demonstration theatre. Uh, it's a wine tasting venue as well, where we will simply be able to showcase food and drink from the destinations that we are visiting around the world. So whether we're in France and we go and get some extra special French wines and French cheeses and French bread, or whether we are in Russia and we decide to do something completely different with Russian vodkas and so forth, um, that's going to be a great venue to highlight some of the food and wine um, around and various other drinks around the world. And of course, when it comes to the cabins and the uh, suites on board, um, generally speaking, they are much larger than you would have found on our previous vessels. And we have also a lot more cabins and suites with balconies as well. So also on the new two new ships, we've got a two tiered main restaurant, giving us the opportunity to offer both fixed and flexible dining options for you. We've got a classic two tiered theater and a much larger spa area um, I don't know about you, but as soon as I get back on a ship, I can't wait to hit the spa, um, particularly on the new ones with the hydro um, hydrotherapy spas. So why would you recommend or want to come on board and cruise with Fred Olsen? Well, the number one point really is the fact that we are smaller ships and that gives us many, many benefits. Um, so we the, new two, the two new ships that we bought were small enough to still have a Fred Olsen feel to them, allowing us to places around the world where the bigger ships simply can't get to. It also means when you're on board, there's less guests, allowing for us a more personal and friendly service. We always design everything on board with safety and comfort in mind. UK departure port. So we are now the cruise line in the UK that uh, depart from the most UK departure ports around the UK. So wherever you live around the UK, we like to say that we're not too far from the Fred Olsen ship. So we have introduced some new local departure ports for 2022 and 2023. Uh, those being Portsmouth, Tilbury and also Belfast. And of course, cruising closer to home. So as well as longer voyages and a range of worldwide destinations, our new itineraries for 2022 will also offer the more possibilities of cruising around the British Isles and cruising to those destinations a little bit closer to home. So for those of you that are looking to dip a toe back into the water and cruising, there's going to be fl plenty of shorter cruises available on offer with the usual ingredients of a Fred Olsen cruise, including sea days, scenic cruising and interesting ports of call. And also the advantage of cruising around the UK and places a little bit closer to home is again the fact that we're smaller cruise ships and we are able to visit some of the smaller places around the UK, and particularly some of the islands around the UK as well. We have lots of islands sometimes that we forget about. The Isles of Scilly, Channel Islands, Isle of Man, and of course, lots of smaller islands up and around the Scottish Highlands as well. 
And number four, you are certainly going to be an experienced hand when you come on board a Fred Olsen cruise. We have over 170 years of maritime experience. We've weathered our fair share of storms and are proud of the awards that we've picked up in recent years. So as a fifth generation family run business, our heritage and our experience sets us apart. And perhaps that's one of the reasons we have more returning guests on board our ship than any other cruise line. And it's nearly it's nearly up to about 70 percent of our guests have cruised with us before, which is a huge number. Um, so putting all those things together is a great reason why you should choose to cruise with Fred Olsen. When it comes to the itineraries, we have won the award for Cruise Critic for the best cruise lines uh, since 2015 and every year um, moving on from there. So we know that we are sending our ships to the right places for you to be able to enjoy your cruise. And even though interesting to see that we weren't sailing for much of 2020, we still were able to win quite a few awards, uh, which is an actually a fantastic achievement um, considering the pandemic that we've been in. So we have won a few customer service awards uh, for 2020, keeping all our passengers up to date of what's been happening with their cruising holidays and where we're going in the future. So it's great to see that we've won awards even in 2020 when we weren't really sailing. So what are our guests looking for when you're coming on board our ships? So you might be in looking for pure relaxation. You might be looking for a journey. You might be looking for some culture and exploration, or you might be looking for a mixture of all of those, whether it's a cruise down to the Canaries in the Caribbean for relaxation and sunshine, a journey up to remote Spitsbergen, or you might want a bit of culture and exploration and visiting uh, European capital cities, and particularly when you're going over to Russia. And of course, you can get all of this on one single cruise as well. And what we do, we do everything for you, our guests, when you're coming on board our ships. And that includes everything. So when we are planning our itineraries, we literally have a blank page year after year. And when we start to plan our itineraries, we do listen to our guest feedback. So whether you like particular ports of call, you want to stay longer, we maybe we are fe not featuring destinations that you would like to see in the brochure for following years. We do listen to you, so your feedback is very, very important. And we take all this into account when we are planning our itineraries, which is probably why we've won the so many awards for itineraries in the past. But it's not just about where we're going, it's also about what you can do when you're in those destinations as well. So we're looking at shore excursions, making sure that you're in port long enough to be able to experience these destinations as well. And like I said, it's a mixture of sea days and port days, so you're not rushing around um, in every single port day. We also don't do bus routes. We're also looking at destinations that we can take you be different itineraries, different durations, different climates. Um, all this is taken into consideration. And of course, calendar and social events as well. So if there's big events on, big festivals, carnivals, um, natural phenomena with the weather, anything at all, if we are going to a destination, we want to make sure that we're taking you at the right time as well to make sure that you're going to enjoy your cruise both on board and also ashore. So there's a huge amount of research that goes into planning your itineraries and we normally work a couple of years ahead, uh, making sure that we book the best ports, we, we get in there as soon as we can to make our itineraries the best for you. So with all that in mind, I'm going to move on and talk to you about some of the highlight cruises that we will be putting on sale um, imminently. So they're going on sale on the 10th of March for our ocean members. So that's anybody that's cruised with us in the past. And if you're in a position where you may not have the opportunity to cruise with us, you have a cruise booked, but sadly had to cancel it, uh, you will be able to transfer if you've got vouchers and book your cruise from the 10th of March as well. Now we're giving you the best opportunity to book your next cruise before they go onto general sale, which is going to be the 15th of March. So, of course, when we do put new itineraries on sale, we have a great new offer as well for you to take advantage of. So the choice is going to be yours if you do decide to have an onboard spending credit with your cruise or if you decide to opt for the all inclusive drinks package. 
So this is going to be on the majority of our 2022 and 2023 cruises. And you'll be able to choose at the time of booking what is going to be your preference. So the onboard spend amount will depend, of course, on the duration of your cruise, but it won't matter what grade of cabin you're choosing. It will be the same amount on that particular itinerary. And then the all inclusive drinks package, if you decide to go for that one. And that's on cruises um, between five nights and 24 nights. So, like I said, um, let's start with some of the UK highlights. Some of the cruises are a little bit closer to home to begin with. So, like I said, we do have uh, departures from all around the UK. This one here um, in particular is doing a clockwise circumnavigation of Ireland, uh, departing from Rosyth. Um, and if you look at all those ports of call and all those little destinations and scenic cruising that we can get to, uh, a lot of people probably don't know this actually, but there are fjords in Ireland um, and in particular the Loch Swilly. And again, being a smaller ship, we are able to go right into the heart of these places for scenic cruising. So that particular itinerary is departing on the 17th of May 2022 on board Braemar. Now every couple of years we do move our ships around the UK so for example if you are only interested in departures out of Rosyth every couple of years we're going to give you an alternative ship and for 2022 it's going to be Braemar that's going to be serving the Scottish and Northern ports um, and in particular that one is Rosyth. So with that cruise, uh, it starts at 1399 per person. There's the option to have free drinks package or the onboard spending credit on that particular voyage is £125. Another one here, this is doing a little bit more of the remote Isles of, and Locks of Scotland. So this is departing from Liverpool on Borealis, our, again, our new ship. This is the 9th of June 2022 for eight nights. And again, we're able to get in and out some of these smaller places and a lot more scenic cruising with our smaller ships. And of course, not forgetting the ports down in the south as well. We've got a Southampton departure that's going to be doing a short break, five night cruise. Uh, a great cruise if you've never cruised before or you've never cruised with Fred Olsen before and you just want to try us out. Great opportunity to cruises from five nights or less. And of course, we do do overnight stays in some of our ports of call around the world as well to give you the opportunity to experience that place in day. Uh, maybe it's a couple of days and certainly an overnight stay as well. And again, smaller ships, we are able to dock in Falmouth. We are able to dock in Plymouth and you will be uh, within a mile of the city centres or the town centre of Falmouth. So um, other five night adventures. So in five nights, believe it or not, you can actually get to the Norwegian fjords, particularly if you are departing from Newcastle. So this is a Balmoral departure in April of 2022. Now, if you've not been to Norway before, I certainly recommend adding it to your bucket list. And the earlier you go in the springtime, so this is a perfect timing when you go to Norway because the, um, the ice will be melting, the snow will be melting and the waterfalls will be at their absolute fullest. And of course, being a smaller ship, we are able to navigate the fjords and take you as close as possible to see some of the biggest and the best waterfalls in Norway. Another cruise here being Brema, our smaller ship within the fleet. She's able to go to places uh, such as cruising the Seine River all the way down to Rouen. Um, again, an absolutely magnificent scenic cruise. If you've not been to Rouen before, again, I do recommend going. It's a very medieval city, um, some great shopping. And of course, from there, you can actually visit Paris if you wish to do so. Um, and Monet's Garden, which I find is a nice, uh, nice place to visit. Also from Five Nights, uh, so this one is departing from Tilbury, which is going to be a new departure port for us in 2022. Uh, and this one's taking in the Danish city break. Uh, so over to Copenhagen and over to Aalborg. If you are looking for something further afield, of course, we do worldwide destinations. So it's just not those shorter cruises. We do a lot longer cruises as well. Now, this one is quite an interesting cruise, actually. It's departing either from Liverpool or across um, 
from Ireland as well. So it will be picking up passengers in Belfast. And this one's heading up to explore the Faroe Islands. Uh, so you've got Torshaven and again, lots of little places in and around uh, the Faroe Islands. Again, Norway, uh, we do visit Norway a lot um, through various times of the year in the summer and of course in the winter as well. This one's particularly interesting. It's a Dover departure on board Valletta and it's actually going to be visiting the Fred Olsen family home. Uh, some uh, lucky guests on board Balmoral a few years ago were very fortunate and uh, went were the first passengers actually to go to the home of the Fred Olsen family, which is just outside of Oslo and the Oslo Fjord. Uh, so that's an absolutely fantastic itinerary. Also taking in Idafjord and Flom, and Flom of course is famous for the Flom Railway. Um, going in the slightly later in the year, so that one's going in September of 2022. And because you're departing from a southern port heading up to Norway, it's going to be a seven night cruise as, to, as opposed to a five night departure. Iconic sites of Croatia and Italy. Now, who doesn't love a bit of sunshine uh, at the end of the summer just to make your summer a little bit longer? So this one is visiting Croatia and Italy. Um, now, that's going on board Bremer. It's a 27 night cruise on the 23rd of October 2022. And again, Bremer being our smaller ship means we are able to explore some of those destinations that the bigger ships can't get to. Ancient walls of the Med with Malta. So with our two new ships, Valletta and Borealis, they are actually a lot faster on the ocean than our previous vessels that we had. So that means you can actually get right over to Malta and back again in 15 night cruise. And the highlight on this one is of course Malta and we will be spending an overnight stay. So you'll get to see particularly uh, cruising into the harbour of Valletta is absolutely magnificent and you will be there on an overnight stay so you'll be able to see all the lights of the city um, in the evening as well. The Corinth Canal in ancient Greece, you may certainly have heard about this, you may have read it on the news, seen it on the news, uh, that we uh, broke a huge number of records when we first went through the Corinth Canal over in Greece uh, with Braemar. And that's the picture that you can see here. So we've decided because it's so, so popular that we are going to be doing more and more departures to the Corinth Canal and ancient Greece. We do have some departures departing from the UK, but you do need to be extremely quick on those because the cabins are nearly virtually sold out. But we, of course, do fly cruises out to the Mediterranean. So you'll be picking up the ship in Malta and flying home from Catalonia and of course taking in lots of beautiful islands in and around Greece and more importantly going through the Corinth Canal as well. So I know a lot of people have added that to their bucket list. You do need to be quick with us and again being on our smaller ship uh, there's less cabins on board than the bigger ships that we have. American Waterways with Canada in the fall. Uh, so this one's heading out over to the US and Canada on the 26th of September 2023. It sounds quite a long way away, 2023, but it will soon be here. And again, it's been perfectly timed this one uh, to experience the rivers and canals of North America and be able to show you the best of the autumn colours. And not forgetting you'll be overnighting in Halifax and of course the Big Apple, New York and St John's. And there's also a little opportunity to visit Bermuda before returning back across the Atlantic to the Azores and then onwards to home. Beautiful cruise. Uh, I would certainly recommend taking an empty suitcase on this one because you're going to be doing lots of shopping on this, no doubt, as well. Occasional sailing. So what does this mean? These are some of those cruises where there's big events, big festivals, maybe it's Christmas. These are the occasional sailings that you won't find every single year. And for 2022 in April is the Floriad Expo. Now you may or may not have heard of this. I will just give you a little bit of an update. It is a horticultural show that happens in Holland and in particular Amsterdam every 10 years. The city comes alive with flowers, with all sorts of bright colours. Um, so I would recommend going over to Amsterdam for the Floriade Expo. 
And of course, we've got two departures going on this one. We will be overnighting in Amsterdam, so you'll be able to spend uh, two days in the city to be able to experience the Floriab Expo. So this happens every 10 years. So uh, if you don't go in 2020, you'll have to wait um, another 10 years. So I do recommend that if it's a short cruise, five nights, either from the southern departures or the northern departures. And of course, taking in another city over in Holland as well, you've got Rotterdam. Got the French Riviera and the Monaco Grand Prix. Now we've done the Monaco Grand Prix um, quite a few times previously, and it's actually been one rated one of the best itineraries, uh, particularly with tickets to Monaco Grand Prix. So if you're into your fast cars, um, I do certainly recommend this particular voyage. We do dock in Villefranche and then we go over to Monaco from there. And of course, you've got a few other cities along the way to enjoy. You've got Alicante, Gibraltar and Barcelona. Who doesn't love Christmas and who does not love Christmas markets? They're a great way to get you into the spirit of Christmas. So leaving early December, uh, 2022 we've got an eight night cruise leaving from Portsmouth on board Balmoral going up and around Denmark, Gothenburg, Copenhagen back through the Kiel Canal into Hamburg and Zeebrugge for Bruges as well so in all the ports of call there'll be some fantastic lights decorations and Christmas market stalls. A white Christmas in Norway, so carrying on with a the Christmas theme, we are taking our guests to experience a very white Christmas up in Norway. And again, overnight stays in Alta. And I'm not sure if you've been up to this part of the world. Maybe you have, maybe you've been in the summer. I do recommend going up in the winter as well because it's completely different. And up in Alta and Honningsvag and Hammerfest is going to be the best opportunity uh, to see the northern lights. So imagine a Christmas cruise with the northern lights would just be absolutely magical. But if you like your Christmases on board, but maybe you don't want to go to the cold weather, then of course head south and head to the sunshine. So we always have cruises down to the Canaries in the Christmas time period. And if you look for those special itineraries with Madeira for an overnight stay on New Year's Eve, you'll see the best firework display in the world. I've seen it and done it for myself and it really is magnificent. Again, something to add to your bucket list. And believe me, it beats Sydney, it beats London and Hong Kong. All those big cities that you think of that have the best firework display for New Year's Eve, it's Madeira. If you want to go somewhere a little bit more exotic, maybe you want to fly out to the sunshine rather than cruising down to the Canaries, we have Christmas in the Caribbean. So you can fly into Barbados in this one, a uh, two week cruise. And we don't generally go around in a circle and do seven day bus holiday routes in the Caribbean. We do change it up, and particularly for those guests that want to do back to back cruising with us. So they want to spend maybe four, six, or eight weeks with us on board in the winter time. Uh, so this one is flying into Barbados. You've got Grenada, Antigua, St. Martin, Tortola, the Bahamas, and then finishing up in Havana in Cuba. And of course, an extraordinary adventure. So maybe you haven't been on holiday for the last 12 months and you've got lots of money to spend on a holiday and you want to go out and see and explore all that the world has to offer. So we have recently put this cruise on sale. It's around the world in 80 days. Uh, so it's a truly magnificent itinerary. It's heading out from Southampton down to Lisbon through the Mediterranean. Uh, you've got ports of call in Italy and then heading down to the Suez Canal, Port Said, Safaga, Mumbai, Kochi, Goa, up to Singapore, You've got Vietnam, Hong Kong, and you've got four ports of call in Japan before crossing over to the Hawaiian Islands. You've got three Hawaiian Islands, then heading up to San Francisco, San Diego, Acapulco, Mexico, down through the Panama Canal. So on the way out, you'll go through the Suez. On the way back, you'll go through the Panama. Then you've got a couple of ports of call in Colombia, the Caribbean, the Azores before returning home. And as I mentioned before, 
we normally go on a world cruise that would depart in January. This one's actually departing a little bit later. It's departing on the 23rd of February. Now, the reason behind that is so that we can time this cruise perfectly so you get the best out of it. So we will be staying an overnight in Safaga in Egypt, allowing for overland tours to Luxor and, of course, the Valley of the Kings. And whilst we are there, it's going to be the 100th anniversary of the opening of Tutankhamun's tomb. So there's going to be lots of um, things going on in and around Egypt during that 100th anniversary of year. Who doesn't love Japan and who doesn't love Japan during cherry blossom? So again, the itinerary is perfectly timed so that when you are in Japan and you arrive, it's going to be in full bloom with all the beautiful cherry blossom. Now, Around the World in 80 Days, of course, is uh, based on the Phileas Fogg novel, but Phileas Fogg didn't go to some of the best places in the world. And of course, with 80 days on Borealis, with a faster ship, we are able to add a few extra special ports in. And of course, three of them being the Hawaiian Islands. So you'll be able to go and relax on the beaches and of course, visit the volcanoes and the volcanic national parks as well. So it's an around the world in 80 days, um, truly, truly magnificent itinerary. It's uh, been on sale um, a couple of days already and cabins are selling extremely quickly. So if you are interested in the around the world bucket list cruise for 2023, then I would recommend uh, booking onto that one sooner rather than later. So if you are interested in um, any more of our itineraries, obviously these are just a snapshot and highlights of the itineraries for you. We will have a digital brochure that you can view. Uh, you can go onto the Co-op Lincolnshire website and have a look at this. We will send you links to the brochure as well. And if you want a brochure, just let us know. We can send you one out in the post. So that's with Co-op Lincolnshire and we can, uh, you can go online and browse the brochure. For those of you out there that unfortunately did have a cruise with us uh, booked for 2020 or any part of 2021 where we've not been able to um, go back in the water yet. So if you have any vouchers that you would like to use to transfer over to a new cruise, just a quick reminder of the vouchers and how they've worked. So there's absolutely no rush to make your decision. Of course, we want to make sure that you choose the right cruise that's perfect for you. And they will be on sale from the 10th of March. Now, like I said, general on sale of the rest of our itineraries um, for people that have not cruised with Fred Olsen before will be the 15th. So you have the first opportunity to rebook and retransfer over to your new cruise to get the best available cabins. However, um, we will keep all your payments on date and they will be held for 24 months. So you can certainly take your time and select the right cruise holiday for you. The future cruise vouchers can be used on any future cruise as long as it's going to be on sale with us and made within the time frames. So if you've got a cruise voucher and it's uh, going to be valid for 10% of your new cruise, uh, and it's valid for 12 months. However, if you decide not to cruise with us, you can simply hold your money with us for 24 months and we will then give you a 5% additional um, money back to say thank you for supporting us during the pandemic. And of course, that would equate to um, interest that you may have earned otherwise if it, that money was in your bank. And of course, at the end of all that, if there isn't a cruise, um, I'm sure there is going to be more than one that you decide to transfer over to. But for any reason, if you're not able to cruise with us, just let us know if you've got the vouchers and we can give you a full refund, no quibbles. But I'm certain that that isn't going to happen because we have a huge number of itineraries on sale for some fantastic worldwide destinations. And just an update really on our plain sailing guarantee. So this does cover now the 2021, 2022 and 2023 departures. So that means if you do book a cruise with us and whatever reason you are unable to go on that cruise, just let us know before you pay the final balance 
which is normally 90 days before departure. If you're booking a longer cruise, then you normally have a uh, interim of payment. So let us know before then, and we can simply transfer the deposit that you've already paid over to a new saving for you. So that's for 2022 and 2023 departures. And of course, that does cover anyone uh, for 2021 saving as well. So that leads me just to uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Uh, we hope we've inspired you to take your next cruise with Fred Olsen. Um, everybody at Co-op Travel up in Lincolnshire is able to help you with any queries that you may have. So please do ask them if you've got any questions, if you want to know pricing and availability on any of our 2022, 2023 departures, they will be more than happy to help you. So I'm just going to uh, go back to Paul now and hand over back to him. Lovely. Fantastic, Kerry. Thank you so much for that. That, as always, is incredibly interesting. Um, some of those new items just look incredible um, and I, I can't wait to see your ship start sailing again. Um, as is always the case with these sort of things, we have got some questions for you. So mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen if you're prepared and ready. Um, <laughs> yeah, go think, ahead. I think you've answered a couple of them already, but okay. just in case people missed it, we'll go through it again. Sure. Um, so here we go. Right, so you should be able to see my screen. So question okay. one from Wayne in Lincoln. I've got a future cruise credit from a cancelled sailing. How do I go about using this? Yeah, so the best thing to do really is um, go back to your travel agent at Co-op and they will be able to uh, make the booking over on your new cruise for you. It's not something you're able to do online yourself, I'm afraid. So uh, go back through Lincolnshire Travel and they will be able to make the booking on your behalf. Lovely, fantastic, thank you. And the next we've got Heather from Grimsby. Um, there aren't any deck plans in the new brochures. Where can I find the information about where the cabins are located? Yeah, uh, there's a valid reason why you won't find the deck plans in the new brochures, particularly for the new ships. And that's because there's still very much a work in progress. So we didn't want to put them in the brochure and start confusing people if we were then going to later change things. Um, we are in the process, um, even in the last couple of days we've actually been taking out some of the bathtubs and replacing them with showers and those sorts of things on board the new ships so we didn't want to put misleading deck plans in the brochure and you get confused and us get confused so um, updated deck plans are going to be available on our website they may be a bit brief they may not have uh, names for restaurants and cabin numbers and so forth on them so all I would kindly ask is please bear with us whilst we are still upgrading and making our ships perfect uh, for when you're able to set on sail. Lovely, that makes sense, thank you. And I think we've got, oh, hang on, let me go back. Got some more questions. Uh, here we go, uh, Julie in Retford. Um, will all guests and crew need to be vaccinated before joining your ships? Um, <laughs> we're probably not, Julie's probably not the only person that's thinking this, absolutely. Yes. We know other cruise lines out there have certainly come out into the media and said you must be vaccinated. Um, we are still very much working with the government, Port Health, um, and we haven't yet made our decision on this. Now, of course, we are going to be um, working in line with CLIA, which is our cruise line body, the government, um, but so at the moment, we aren't able to answer that, say absolutely yes or absolutely no. It's something that obviously is at the forefront of our planning for 2021 departures. Um, so at the moment, I can't answer that exactly, but we are very much looking into it and looking at all the aspects of what a safe cruise is going to be like in the future. And once we've got all that information, of course, we'll be able to let you know and update you. Lovely. Fantastic. Thank you. Two more, I believe. Um, from Mark in Pinchbeck, uh, what happens if I book a cruise and can't travel travel due to COVID? Um, is my money protected? OK, so if you are cruise booking a cruise and it's departing in 2021, uh, then yes, absolutely. You can transfer that deposit over to a new cruise or you can simply get a full refund on that deposit or, or final balance. Um, if you're travelling for 2022 and 2023, Oh my goodness, we hope COVID is gone by then. Um, but should anything crop up, then uh, if you paid a deposit, you can simply transfer that deposit onto an alternative cruise. So you won't lose out. You'll be just transferring your money across. 
Lovely, fantastic. And last but not least, Jaren Grantham. Um, so there's an offer of free drinks on board um, for most departures. If I opt for onboard spend, can I still buy the drinks package? Absolutely, yes. So uh, the, the onboard spending credit is there for you to use on anything, whether it is drinks, spa, uh, you want to go and get your hair done for formal night, those sorts of things. But if you want that, but you also want to have the drinks package because you think that's going to be a good deal for you. Absolutely, you can purchase the drinks package. It's going to be £19 per person per day um, on the majority of cruises. That, that's from five nights to 24 nights. Lovely. Fantastic. I think that is everything. Fabulous. Lovely. Fantastic, Kerry. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you all yeah. for listening. Yes, and thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you.